Okay, you and your guy throw really great parties. I'm over it. What, you're done with them? <laughs> yeah, I hate it. Why? Because I hate everybody. <laughs> yeah, I have a great time. Every time Grant, I go. Why don't you tell me what you want, and we'll give you like a-, a <laughs> Yeah, but tell me why you- We'll give you a birthday party. Tell me why you- <laughs> You know what, I have really weird friends, and I have really different friends, Yeah. and I don't think that they go together, to be honest. I have like maybe five friends out here who I would want to invite to my birthday party. Who makes that list? Matt Bennett. Okay. You can come. Thank you. My friends Rob and John. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually telling you people because I don't have anybody. I'm not crying right now. <laughs> uh, Who's number five? Daniela. Ariana's out of town. I cannot get to ten. I'm just going to tell you right now. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. It could be a small Leon gap. Thomas. Okay. I'm in Jogia if he's not like... Doing something. Shooting in a desert, playing Jesus or something. <laughs> <laughs> the pharaoh. The fa oh, he's being tight. How cool is that? That is a pretty That's sweet cool. gig. That's cool. He's tut. The, uh, he's King Tut with Ben Kingsley. And he, That's some other shit. He por portrays it awesome. Like, I, I was seeing stills from the set. He looks great. Stills ain't film, but I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, I've seen previews. He's incredible. I'm I'm so proud of him. It's it's really cool. It's pretty it's special. Really good cast. To take a look at the cast of Victorious and see how far you guys have come over Having the past said that, few years. Let's take a look. <laughs> 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 I have a slideshow. <laughs> I'm so crazy. I should be in a padded cell. <laughs> it's cool that they let me out. <laughs> Sorry. What's your dream girl? Like, what are you looking for out here <laughs> in Los Angeles? Uh, going for uh, I I want someone who's career minded. Somebody uh, is it? Are you are you a working girl in the eighties? What is that? <laughs> so just career minded. Well, here's the, here's what I'm thinking. To be honest, okay. Like I've come to the conclusion that I'm not the guy. Uh, you in know, a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but also the guy who really can't do like a one night stand. So yeah, you'd like cling to her. She'd be like, get, go home. <laughs> you'd be like, what are we having for breakfast? She'd be like, get off of me. And she'd probably be at my place too. She'd call you an Uber. She'd call you a, an Uber like a black car. Hey. Hey. That's nicer than the Ubers I get myself. I'll take that. I UberX too. Do There's you? much more of a sense of community in UberX. Because <laughs> Liz Gillies loves her sense of community. Ugh. <laughs> this Uber guy the other day was so high. <laughs> they are always high. No, and yeah, for sure. But this guy, yeah. this guy could not, he was like this. He couldn't open oh, his no. eyes. And he's just like, <clears throat> and I'm like, oh. I'm like, are you? Are you? And I was just, I was in a real bitchy mood. Like I was just, I was just not anyone's friend that day. I was just not having it. And he starts driving. He's like, mm, should I get my hair cut? I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, why? Well, he's like, should I get my hair cut? I'm like, should you get your? I'm like, if you want to get your hair cut, he's like, are you going to Coffee Bean? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm just gonna come in. I'm just gonna come in with you. I'm like, you're not. What? You're no, absolutely. no. He got out. I was what? like, so I had him actually. St the worst thing I ever did is to date. My Uber driver was, I have a thing with mouth noises, like when my dogs lick themselves or when someone's yeah. chewing. And my Uber driver was chewing gum and it was just, <laughs> it was so bad that I go, you know what? This is 38 seconds into the ride or like two minutes. I got out near a highway. I was like, I'm actually, this is actually good for me. And he's like, it's right near a highway. And I'm like, this is good. And I called another Uber. Because <laughs> I couldn't listen to him chew, it was disgusting. I put on the radio, it cut through. That's scary. All the times when the singing would stop, the the, the chewing would come through. It was horrible. I, sense of community, yes. You get a great sense of like what America really is, especially here in Los Angeles. Who is Los Angeles? But I hate LA so. Much. Why don't you drive yourself? Oh, because I don't like driving. Yeah, I haven't driven in two years. You got it. First of all, no, I don't have a car. You get a Mini Cooper. I feel You're like you're evil for bringing this up. What? The Mini Cooper story. I was so proud of you when you had a Mini Cooper. Um, I told my Mini Cooper twice if we're going to do this. <laughs> dope, dope. I, no, I actually didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. I got into one car accident because the car didn't work. It was a lemon, turns out. So they repurchased it from me, actually, after a year. Because it was flawed. You're looking at me like, it wasn't really? You, you, it wasn't your accident? <laughs> Look at that smug just, look. Someone to needs to turn so you over like, and spank you. I just want, listen, I just want to hear how the accident happened. You were not happened. spanked enough as a kid. <laughs> That's actually the most accurate description of Dan I've ever heard. I want to hear about the accidents. He's interested. Ugh. It's great your car is a lemon, but how'd you Face get in a wall. crash? You know what? Face the wall. <laughs> no, my car is a lemon. It's a lemon. Which <laughs> like I, it's a lemon. There's a part of me that, like... I feel uh, responsible for bringing a Mini Cooper into your life. You spent many a days in my Mini, and I feel like you enjoyed it there. I mean, it was my only ride. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun. It was fun. I liked your Mini Cooper. We had a lot of talks in your Mini Cooper. Yeah, we had some good times. Good a lot moments. of what's wrong with us talks. Oh, too many. Anyway, so whatever. But I got in an accident, and then... <laughs> I don't know what happened. I think I had a concussion. This 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 like really LA girl's like, you want to go? 
<laughs> you want to go? I'm like, do I want to? What are you talking about? She wanted to fight me or like, something? Where do you want to go? <laughs> like, but she was not like ghetto. She just was really. It she d- just wanted to. F- she wanted to slap me or something. Like she would like if she were at a restaurant on like Bravo. Like she wanted to like. <laughs> she wanted to like Real Housewives me, and I was like, I was like, I don't want. I don't care. She's like, she's like, but she's like, you told. She goes, look at me, I'm bleeding. And there was literally, I don't even. She like, I don't, there was like one drop of blood. Maybe she was bleeding. I don't remember. <laughs> But I was just, I, I got into some person, this homeless guy tried to, it was a horrible day. I can't even go into it. Anyway, so I go and I go to this random, like, dealer, the, the shop, I guess you call it. Okay. I got picked up by my boyfriend. I was literally sitting like this. And the dude goes, I'm sorry, I know you've had a rough day. I'd offer you a beer, but my kids watch your show. <laughs> so I know that you're not of age. And I was just like, I don't like beer anyway. So then I was, like, having my water and I got picked up. Long story short, the car after that ever came out of the shop overheated five times. What? With smoke and everything. So the last time it overheated, I was on Laurel Canyon. My grandma and my mom were driving the car just over the hill so we can get picked up the next day to go to the Mini Cooper dealership. They're driving it on Laurel Canyon at 5 p.m. during rush hour. It breaks down in the middle of Laurel Canyon. Oh, my God. And for all the people who are lucky enough not to live in wow. L.A., Laurel Canyon is a very busy street. Yeah. It's stopping a winding there. road in the hill. So I go there. They're like so frazzled, it's getting dark. They're two women and yeah. I'm, and I and I'm like, let's leave it. Let's go. So I called and I'm like, my car's here. He's like, I'll be there in two hours. I'm like, you're gonna be here by yourself, because I'm leaving right now. So <laughs> I left the car with the keys in it on Laurel Canyon for three hours and they got it and it was fine. But I was there's not a shot. There's a Louis C. K. thing where he a rental car, he's just like, you remember it, right? He, he's, he just decided to leave the rental car. He doesn't want to return it to the rental car. So he's like, you have to go get it. I'm getting on my flight. There's, and that's kind of what I did. I was and like, did I they don't, get it? I don't get, they did, yeah, of course they did. I'm and like, you want to get your car? My guy was like, what if someone tries to steal it? I'm like, it does not go. Like, <laughs> the worst part, though, we left like food in there because I was moving out of my apartment. We left food in there. And then two months later, when I picked it up, the food was still in there. Oh. Oh. Someone's like, I think there's something died in your car. I'm like, why don't you clean it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, that's the story of the Mini Cooper. It's so, gone. Never I don't want to drive again. Never going to drive again? No, I, I'll live in New York. How do your friends take everything that's going on? Because I loved hanging out with them, you know, when we were hanging out in Yeah, Hollywood. that was fun. We had a good time. They're really great. Yeah, they're really great. I, and I feel like they kind of put their blinders on to everything. Because they know me as like a like 48-pound, flat-chested, <laughs> nerdy, mini Jim Carrey person. <laughs> like like with zero sex appeal or or fame, I guess, or anything. That's how they, when you grow up with people, they see you as you were, not yeah. as. And I'm still the same. I mean, I'm the same. I think I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I just have more, you know, I guess I've been kind of successful with stuff. But so it's cool when you get to see people that you grew up with. You're tre- you all act like you did when you were kids. And that's the beauty of having friends from home, I think. Do you have moments where you need to reflect? Because you really have come really far. I mean, this is a big deal. You have Thank your you, own Barbara FX Walters. show. Thank um, <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's really cool. I was on the plane home from some press stuff the other day. And just the best part is the ca- just the cast is so cool. And we really are like a family. And so... That was cool. Such an ideal situation. And if we weren't, I would tell you, because everyone says that when they come on shows. We're like like a family. I'd be like, I hate all of them. They suck. But they don't. I love them. Was this a big one? Like, when they told you this was it, was there a sense of relief that took over you? Or was there trepidation? Did you have to think twice? Think twice? No. I actually was up for another. I was. It was between this show or another show for me. And I Uh definitely didn't know if I had this show already. And I had the other one. And it was a sitcom. It was like a sitcom for like... Some network, like a big network, it's like a big sitcom, and I turned it down at the prospect of hopefully getting this. Like I put all my eggs in this one, and it worked. Yeah, I was really, I really wanted to get it, so I was happy that I did. Scary move, moving, you know, putting all the eggs in one basket. I guess so, but I really just, I was really determined to make it happen. It was really, our, my audition was really it felt good with him, with Dennis, and uh, it was fun. I don't know I'm that happy. chemistry. How do you know that you have it with someone on set? Uh. Uh, you audition, I guess. Chemistry but, is instant. No, when but, you meet people, that's why you have chemistry tests. It's like you can meet somebody, and if there's not that thing, and because there's so much improv in the show, if there's not that back and forth, forth if you don't have back and forth, <laughs> what am I? <laughs> uh. New Jersey. New Jersey. The worst. <laughs> uh. I didn't get the accent somehow. I don't know how I didn't get the no, accent. I, I feel like you also... Uh, when I was watching the show again, and I was seeing the performances, and watching- How'd you like Joan Jett? You saw that episode. How great does she look, and how cool is she? Stupid, dude. And then she Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. I mean- I know. An icon. I know. Tell me when you first- What is that, the interaction between the you two of you You know when, when someone's so much cooler than you that you don't want to talk? 
that was my experience with Joe That's and how Jack. I feel right now. <laughs> I was like, um, I was just like, when someone's just like next level, can never get there cool. Yeah. And you're just, you just are you. <laughs> it's just like, I just kind of was just in marveling at the whole thing. Because I'm obviously a Joan Jett fan, and we all were. And she was just so cool. And she's like, hey, man. She was just so, she, her voice was so cool. And she just, and she could act. And, Dude, she did Like, she was so, so well. funny. And it was just like, it was trippy. I didn't, when, I didn't expect her to do that well. When I, when I saw, she appeared in the episode first, like, she was, I don't want to give it away, but she was in documentary in, style. Yeah, she was in the the video sequence, mm-hmm. and then at, you know towards the end of the episode, you see her again. I had no idea that she she could act like that. I know, I know, killed it. I know. Now was there music? Because rock stars are better people than us, like British people. Yeah, British people and rock stars, especially <laughs> British rock stars, are better than we are. Are you learning about the <laughs> art of rock and roll through this project? Yeah, I had to. Funnily enough, uh, uh, Dennis and I uh, were putting songs together for uh-huh. we're making a radio station list for something right and so i just know the stuff that i like that he he does not like and so i was filtering out like all my Joni mitchell like i was just because i was listening to i listened to so much jazz and i listened to so much Joni mitchell and i listened to like really soft music and yeah. i had to listen to harder music for this for sure because even my 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 rock that i listened to was more psychedelic kind of 70s woodstocky as opposed to okay. hard rock I mean, the way they act over pop artists, it's a difference. It is a world of a difference. It's a different lifestyle. Are you embracing that lifestyle? Do you want to live that lifestyle? I'm so high right now, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't know where I am. <laughs> you see, I'm wearing a t-shirt, I mean, which makes me so cool. Th- rock and roll, dude. Um, No. No. Rock music I would, is- you know what I would do after we wrapped like a scene where I was like, like that music video that just came out. Yeah, it was just like really pretty rock starish, and I'm wearing like like lizard skin pants, and I'm wearing a bra <laughs> and like dancing and screaming and like rubbing my body on the floor. I went home. I went to anthropology and bought candles <laughs> after. <laughs> like I made sure. You're such a white like girl. I, I, it's unbelievable. I asked the, our AD a thousand times, like, when are we gonna wrap today? Because anthropology closes. I think it was nine in the city. <laughs> oh my god. And I it was Christmas. It was like around Christmas, and I needed candles because. <laughs> I made sugar. Can we, I made can sugar we wrap cookies. This up? I'm the worst, <laughs> and it's so bad. I'm not cool. I'm so. I'm. Just, I'm a. I'm a 40 year old woman. Do you want to do rock music after this show? I love. First of all, though, one thing like I love rock music. I love singing rock music. Yeah. I love performing rock music. Like that, I feel like is the one authentic part of me. I don't feel like I'm putting on any. Of course. Anything for that? Yeah, sure. You can do so many different styles. I mean, I. I Again, that's like, the problem, though. I'm like, I, I said like this to someone the other day. I'm like mice standing on top of each other in a yeah. in a jacket. Like I'm just made of I'm made of voices. I'm not a person. I'm just made of impersonations. I just you open it, and they're all just like. Meh. I don't know. Rock music. Is there a future in it for you, outside of the show? Ask Doctor Rock. <laughs> you have to ask him. The Wizard of Oz. I don't. You have to. I mean, if if someone wants to give me an opportunity to do rock music, if people take it seriously. Because yeah. a lot of the time when people do TV shows and then, you know, the greatest thing about this, which I was, you know, we're stressing this because it was really important to us is that I sang all the songs live and he sang all the songs live. And in TV, that's kind of not done. Taboo, yeah. It's not done for sound reasons. Technical, like Technically, it's difficult to do that. It, things bleed into other things, but we want it to feel really real and I think it really helped. What's the, one, what's the, what's the biggest thing you've learned from Dennis so far? To trust my instincts. As an actor, I really, I always was really, I always really focused on, it sounds shallow, but like how I was coming off, how I looked, how I was angled, what yeah. I was, and I, for, when you are improv and you have to do a scene and you have no lines in front of you, you can't, you literally have no time to think about it, so it really keeps you in the moment. So I'd say being in the moment and trusting instincts is something he really taught me. So important. He's teaching me how to be a, a badass motherfucker. Most badass thing you've done since you started shooting Killed the show. Killed somebody. <laughs> Could you imagine? (laughs) Um, It killed somebody. It was crazy. Let me tell you the story. (laughs) It felt so good. It was in the meatpacking desk and I said, just screw it. Just do it. It was freeing. You only live once. (laughs) I was like YOLO. And then I slit her throat. Killing someone? Not so bad. (laughs) This will come back. Can't ever murder somebody now. This will come back. <laughs> Damn it! Now I can't. in a previous someone. interview with radio host Zach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, come I on. Don't know. The whole show. I mean, nothing. 
On the most badass thing I did on the show. I mean, bad, there's drugs flowing. There's a, you do a lot of badass I've things. Literally now. never done drugs. I'm the worst. I, you, <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Do you feel like you haven't lived due to the life you've I talked lived about it. for the past like yeah, 10 years? Yeah, 